Mr. Zuckerberg, would you be comfortable sharing with us the name of the hotel you stayed in last night? Um, uh, no. If you've messaged anybody this week, would you share with us the names of the people you've messaged? Uh, Senator, no, I would probably not choose to do that publicly here. I think that may be what this is all about. So, um, this morning I got up with another message about this WhatsApp privacy issue. And I was just thinking to myself, okay, uh, we as humans have complicated the situation so much. People ha keep asking me for my opinion, uh, not that I am some expert, they're just generally asking random people about, you know, should I sign up? Should I agree on the uh, privacy changes that WhatsApp has made? But, uh, you know, it, it just thought, made me think about the entire thought process of privacy and what it really means for everybody. Privacy has become such a complex issue. Some, some of us share some of our most private moments on social media and then suddenly it becomes an issue if somebody demands uh, access to that uh, information or those moments then we, 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 we may, may or may not have things that we want to hide hence we don't want people to know about it hence we are worried what's being shared online it's it's just a cycle that keeps going round and round and round and there is no right or wrong. I understand the need to have privacy. I understand um, the need to share. But most of us don't even know what's out there uh, on the internet. Uh, and, you know, privacy in the real world and looking at privacy in the virtual world are two different things. Somehow in the real world, we feel that we have privacy and it, it feels secure and feels that we are alone. However, we don't realize sometimes in our interactions there are eavesdroppers, there are people who are looking at our information. We just have a sense of security. Mr. Pichai, is it true that the Android operating system sends Google information every few minutes detailing the exact location of a smartphone within a few feet, the speed of movement of the phone, the altitude of the phone sufficient to determine what floor of a building the phone is on, the temperature surrounding the phone and other readings, and if so, with Americans carrying their phones with them virtually at all times, doesn't the collection of this volume of detailed information really mean that Google is compiling information about virtually every movement an individual with a smartphone is making every hour of every day? Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you for that question. Uh, today, for any service we provide our users, uh, we go to great lengths to protect their privacy, and we give them transparency, choice, and control. Uh, Android is a powerful platform and, and provides smartphones for over 2 billion people. And as part of that, it depends on the applications users choose to use. Uh, if you're using a fitness application, which is detecting the number of steps you walk, you expect it to send that information. But it's a choice users make. We make it clear. And, and it depends on the use cases. Uh, so like I was saying earlier, privacy seems to be a big issue all, all over the place. But like my father used to say, um, we are all social animals and because of which we, when, or when we go out and we meet people, we are exposed to, to people we don't know. And I don't know, we share information that we, we don't know how they will use against us, for us. Privacy is an important aspect of our life. I, I, don't take me long that I'm saying that it's not an important aspect. But it is an aspect that we actually don't really have too much control over in this day and age. On, this, on social media, you know, over the last few years, social media has become such a huge part of our life. Uh, and we have been using different apps, different platforms. We have been sharing so much of information out over there. And now, you know, when WhatsApp has put out their policy change, we are making such a big deal out of the whole thing, but the reality is that we have already shared all our information on multiple apps. Today, I think Google knows more about us than our families, partners, friends. I'm sure they remember things that we did last year, five years back, which we won't even remember ever doing our ourselves. So privacy is a topic that is I think as a word, not even as a topic, has been as a word has been misused, misunderstood, and has been redefined over the last uh, few years. The app 
collects a minimum amount of information um, that is necessary to operate the service. So for example, the messages that people send um, is something that we collect in order to operate the service. But um, in general, that data is not going to be shared with third parties. Um, it is not connected to um, the broader Facebook experience. Excuse me, uh, as a lawyer, I picked up on that word in general, that phrase in general. It seems to suggest that in some circumstances it will be shared with third parties. No, it will not. All right. Okay, so I've been running my mouth off on privacy for almost like five minutes now. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it was a great idea to get an input from the people that really get affected by privacy. I think women face the brunt of lack of privacy online. Uh, and I thought it was a great uh, opportunity just to speak to a few of my colleagues um, about their opinion on privacy. So there is a quick intro. <laughs> we, I'm, I'm seriously eating right now. Julie. Yeah, yeah, but you need to give an opinion You're on it. You're invading her privacy. <laughs> yeah. this, this is exactly what's happening. This is invading my privacy. Let me eat. So, she can eat, but you can still share. I also have Pallavi over here who always has an opinion on something or the other. Uh, and sadly, I don't have any opinion on this one, but I feel in real world, privacy obviously is very, very important, especially for women. Um, I think people have become very, very uh, mature and more uh, intelligent in treating others. So I don't think it's not privacy evasion ka problem. Hota hai. But yes, I think uh, we are very careless ho jate hai, and we expose ourselves a lot so that our privacy will evade. Ho jai. So I think it's a lot we need to control than what others have to do. So uh, earlier when I, was, uh, you know, when I was talking about this, I mentioned that in the real world, we think that we have our privacy, but do you think that we actually are not aware about what actually happens around us? So while we are in a restaurant, for example, we're having a conversation, there's somebody behind who can overhear your conversation. You don't know who they are, um, what is their intent, if yeah. there is any intent. Yeah. So do you think in the real world also there is, we are, we are in this false um, uh, understanding that we have privacy? Yeah, I think to an extent what you're saying is true, but it will also depend on who is sitting in the Like if I were in a restaurant and I was sitting in the discussion, I would not eavesdrop. But it also depends on intentions of other people. So you're right, I think we also have this false sense of privacy around us because we don't always know the intention of the other people. So hmm. we feel secure in this world. But you're right, it's true. What about, what about y'all? You all are the ones on Instagram all the time. <laughs> Constantly, actually. Yeah. So, so what is it? So while she's, she's given a, her insight into what hmm. privacy is um, at home or at, uh, in, in the real world, what about online? What do it's, you all face? Is, is it's privacy? actually up to you how active you are there. Hmm. I choose to be active on Instagram. Hmm. Rest of Same yeah, yeah, I I do. Do. But I think so. The I mean, it's not about just being active online. It's also about the policies of yeah. Instagram. What like if I'm being overheard, I'm talking about something, you know, some product, mm. and immediately I, I mean, I get that advertisement on my phone. Mm. This is not privacy. I mean, even if I'm I'm restricting myself from being on Facebook, I'm not on Facebook. I'm restricting myself from being on Instagram, but then. Even the, after that, I'm being, you know, heard from everywhere. That's just... So, uh, so are you all uh, um, accepting the WhatsApp policy change? I did accept it. I, I think WhatsApp is a platform where, you know, we, just, we have very personal conversations with people. But then Instagram and Facebook has been doing the same thing for a long time, right? Mm. It's also convenient because uh, when, uh, you know, when I'm thinking of buying something and I, you know, I, I say it and I, my phone listens to me and then I go to my Facebook and I see those ads and I, it's basically it just lists down what I need. So it has its own pros and cons. So this debate about privacy is never going to end. And I think the only people who can really take this forward are the policy makers and the government and unless they step up and take a decision that our privacy is important, nothing is really going to change. The reality also is that we don't want to pay for the stuff that we use. We, you, we want to use Facebook, we want to use WhatsApp, but we're not really paying. Uh, paying. So it, how does a company really run? If, if you're not willing to pay for it, then, then 
how are they going to make money and in the current models that they have in uh, ultimately you are the you are the commodity if they get information about you and sell it off and that's how they're going to make money uh, advertisers are just waiting to get into your homes sell their products to you and they are just capitalizing on this need and hence uh, there is a lack of uh, privacy the day we decide that our privacy is the most important thing to us either you stop using it uh, or using their services or start paying for the services then i think you'll get the service that you need so i think most of the people today while they're debating it and trying to move over to other apps and take uh, matters into their own hands the reality is that there is no other option other than accepting these uh, change in policies uh, moving o- over to a new app is not really the solution because at the end of the day that's if somebody takes them over they can change their so and and also the most of the people who i have spoken to have have clearly said that while they are debating and not sure ultimately they want to use whatsapp and by 8th of february if you don't accept those privacy changes you will not be able to use their service so while a great topic to discuss privacy is not really something that we can control anymore our lives are now really an open book to the to all of these companies uh, it is for us to either disconnect or accept what's happening how do you sustain a business model in which users don't pay for your service senator we run ads 